Yeah, we might have been muted there. Were we muted? I can't tell. <laughs> Please let me know if we were muted. Uh, everything is good. Well, we were just talking about the speed run. We're playing all 1d4, trying to stick to classic principles like uh, fighting for the center. Let's play knight f3 here. Let's keep it simple. Are we sure I was muted? Can we get some confirmation? Okay, h6. Black is really wasting a lot of time here, so I'm just gonna go go for the center. I was muted. Oh, that's a bummer. Well, what did we say? We were talking about the speedrun. <laughs> Basically nothing new. Um, I'm just trying to rely on basic opening principles here. Nothing crazy, not relying on like fancy theory. Okay, knight f6, if we trade this one, that brings black's queen out. It's a little bit early. I think we can, we can definitely consider this one or we can just play bishop d3 and uh, just keep developing. Let's play bishop d3, just keep developing our pieces. Hey, thanks for the raid, Capfee, much appreciated. Okay, so bishop b4, check. We don't mind this trade either, so I'm just gonna play bishop d2. Because black can trade these minor pieces, but they're still gonna be left with this bad light square bishop. So even though they kind of simplify the position, black isn't really solving their opening problems. That said, it's not gonna be like that easy to, to capitalize on this. Like black is solid, but actually still like I mean, passive, but pretty solid. Hey, Ian, doing good. How are you? All right, let's take this one. Knight d7. So now we got to just figure out where we want to put our king, if we want to go queen side or king side. I think king side here, just keep it simple. Black might want to get a tempo here with knight f6, and we'll drop the bishop back to c2. So now this structure is quite interesting because it's like we have more space, we have the better bishop, but it's really important that we don't let black play this key move c5. If they're able to play this one, then they often get to equalize here because the bishop will come out and they just have no problems whatsoever. Um, but if we can stop them from playing c5, even if we have to play c5 ourselves, then we're going to be in good shape here as white. Okay, queen e7. Interesting move. I'm not sure what black wants. Does he want c5 with this one? Because he's not really castled yet. He would be kind of running into like bishop a4 check. Might be kind of annoying. Well, let's go rook fe1 actually. This is a nice move just because it lines up against the queen. And now on c5, we're always going to be able to play uh, d5. So I'm just going to bring my pieces to the center. Okay, castling queen side. Yeah, this is going to be risky, but still we'll have to try to punish it. Let's start with knight e5, just putting the knight on a good square. And then we're definitely going to be thinking about just like launching the, uh, the queen side pawns. Yeah, I still feel good about our chances here because we still have kind of the better minor pieces here, in particular, the better bishop. Well, last move, if black had played c5, white would take it, I think. Hmm, then h7. We can take this one and put black's rook on a weird square and try to play against the bad bishop. I actually kind of like this plan. I feel like it's... It's quite simple and it makes sense. So rook takes, then I want to play c5. Now that black doesn't have a knight that can kind of take advantage of this d5 square. And then if we get kicked with f6, I'm just going to relocate the knight to, uh, to d6. So here we're just playing for like a very classic good knight versus bad bishop scenario. 
uh, where I want to go knight c4, maybe b4, a4, b5, to start pushing on the queen side. Maybe queen a5 somewhere if I get the chance. And black owes me a tempo because this rook on h7 is really, really bad. Uh, when does Ultimate Sensei Season 2 start? Well, we're hoping to start in like the next couple of weeks, but it takes a lot of planning. Okay, f6, knight c4. And then I want to go queen a5. Maybe knight d6. And yeah, just start messing around on the on the dark squares. Okay, G5. Well, let's see. If Black's next move is Rook G7, for example, I'm not sure if it will be, but probably H5. But if it is, we'll have Knight D6, check Knight F5. I have a funny way of winning the exchange. So let's just make a neutral move B4. Kind of intending to still just follow our basic plan, but in rook g7 we have we have knight d6 check in mind. So queen a5, I just thought king b8, yeah, there's no, no real follow-up. F5, well I think this one just hangs, I think we have our same trick, check, and we take, let's do that. Uh, yeah, we want to we wanna do all new coaches for every season, that was kind of the idea. From the outset. <laughs> hey, Sventine. Okay, so we got the pawn. Now I think we're just going to drop the knight back into its best square where it just kind of dominates everything and our plan i mean is pretty straightforward just kind of use the knight to our advantage maybe now we're totally okay with any end game because we're up a pawn and we'll slowly press and win um and yeah it's just a matter of not really allowing black to get any counterplay here sometimes easier said than done but in this case i feel like it's pretty simple when you have the pawn and like the positional compensation it's quite nice here we can also think about bringing our knight back to e5 if we so choose okay black is offering the end game i think that's totally fine here we just have a huge advantage that uh it makes sense to simplify um okay i think we should be just improving our rooks here let's play g3 And then if rook f3, we'll just meet him with rook e3. And as long as we don't let the bishop active, I think we should be all right. Sometimes, you know, black breaks through. They get ideas like takes, takes, e5, for example. But yeah, usually... You can have everything under control. Takes, rook e7, knight c4. I think we're okay. Rook f8.
Okay, so let's just double up. I guess I'm looking for some idea here on the king side to improve things and create some targets. So probably I'm thinking about this idea, like rook e4 and h4. Let's just play king g2 first just to improve the king and not allow black's rook in. Okay, black is trying to kind of destabilize things with b6, but it's not really enough because we just have, if a5, we just go a3. And we'd be able to support in everything. Okay, here we have kind of an interesting choice. If we go de, then in some cases we allow black to play e5. Whereas if we go bc, or dc I should say, versus if we go bc, then we don't get the queenside presence, but we keep better control over the center. I'm going to take with the, the d pawn. I feel like this one is more secure overall because I'm really not afraid of e5 and I want to keep this kind of control over the b file. Although I don't, I don't know if I need a3. I think I can just play h4 here right away. And then we'll play a3 later to secure the pawn and then we'll try to go after the second weakness here with h on the h file. Hey, Ulan, thanks for the gifted sub. Much appreciated, guys. Break F8. So now I feel like it's time to like start trying to trade. So I'm going to bring this rook to F4. We trade off one pair of rooks, maybe get the rook to f6. And yeah, slowly, slowly convert this one. So this does allow black to play e5, but at this point I just feel like it's kind of, it's kind of necessary. But on e5, I'm thinking rook f7 might be a good move. If takes, knight takes f7, hits both pawns. And, uh, okay, well here I think I'm just going to trade and simplify. Hmm, do I have any advice on visualization? Yeah, actually, I have a video on visualization on my YouTube channel um, that I think would be useful. Ulan, thanks for the gifted subs. Wow, four subs. Thank you very much. Okay, I want to, I want to get my king in here. Yeah, now everyone has their like fresh geese, <laughs> their emo badges. Yeah, Alex Astana has a good video on it as well. Okay, so I just have a very simple idea here of just playing f3 and blocking the bishop so I can take this one. I think we're going to think we're going to convert it. Uh, the knight and the bishop, they kind of dominate each other, but that lets us push these pawns forward. But let's um activate the king, or actually, you know, we can even grab this pawn. Wow, a lot of options. This one allows black to come in, but I think that's worth it, because the c pawn is going to be very, very powerful, and then we can come back to d4 and hit the bishop. And then we're just going to be pushing this one next. I would prefer to like get my king in, but yeah, this pawn was just too too valuable not to take. And now we can push this one, and then black's defenses are just way too stretched, because if they manage to stop this one, then we just start pushing the uh, the g-pawn. I do want to be a little bit careful. There's like this e5 threat, but I'm going to have knight f5 check, so 
yeah, I don't think we have anything to really worry about. And let's see, I think we want to defend this one. Yeah, if we go g5, we give up both pawns. That's kind of unfortunate. So yeah, let's play here. And then black can go after this pawn, but we'll just start running our g pawn. Okay, needed to use the bishop to stop this one in time. It's, yeah, not happening with the king. Okay, GG. I think he could have uh, defended that one better. Um, but yeah, let's play. Let's play a rematch. All right, we're playing Tokyo Dynamite. Let's play the Queen's Gambit. So knight f6. So when they don't defend the the pawn with a pawn, I like to just take and get the two center pawns right off the bat. And then we'll play knight f3 here. Then our next move will be e4. So let's play e4, let's take the center, and then let's go knight c3 next. This should be four check, interesting. Okay, we'll go bishop d2, no problem. We really don't mind trading these bishops because I think this is black's better minor piece. And so black is still gonna be left with this problem bishop that they have to figure out. In a lot of these games, we do see that black just never solves the problem of the bishop. And, and this one might be might be another case. All right, let's play bishop d3. And uh, we'll definitely consider going for uh, e5 here. Okay, knight c6, annoying move hitting this pawn. Let's be cheeky and play e5 and defend the pawn kind of indirectly because of the old the old bishop takes h7 sack. <laughs> yeah, I'll definitely be playing uh, the Hamilton sack very soon. <laughs> okay, I don't think we have enough for this one here because I don't think our queen is in, in position. If we go knight g5 check, then king just goes back to g8 and our queen doesn't have a good move there. So I'm just gonna drop the bishop back either to e4 or to b1. Let's play bishop b1 because I want to kind of leave this square open for my knight and leave the kingside attacking chances open. Okay, knight c4, a black is playing like a really, I gotta say a really annoying style, <laughs> but, but we're not too worried yet. Queen e2, just sidestepping, keeping an eye on b2 and uh, hitting the knight. So this is just like a one move attack. It's not necessarily good for black's position, whereas I feel like for, for white, our pieces are well placed, not under pressure and ready to improve. And now at some point, if we play like h4, we will be threatening the Greek gift. We've been seeing this one a lot in this series. In fact, I'm tempted to just play h4 in this position. Uh, because I think we can use the rook on the king side. Yeah, let's do it. Let's go for it. Because I think this is just a classic scenario where we should try to play for this one. Now, if we had a bishop on c1 already, then we would have sacked and gone knight to g5. And we were just gone for it. But without the h-pawn, of course, the knight on g5 isn't supported. So it wouldn't, it wouldn't work. Okay, c5. Now we're definitely considering this one. Hardcore. King will go to h6 though, because we don't have this bishop on c1 aimed at that square, and it actually might not be that good. So on c5, I think we're gonna have to consider just taking this one. And uh, looks like that is gonna be some free material. Okay, knight d5. Now we have this move if we want to hit the critical square. also play a3 but black's idea is to take and ruin our pawns and bring the other knight to d5 
So my next instinct is to go knight e4. Avoid the trade and leave one of black's knights kind of stranded. But knight f4 is kind of annoying actually, I'm noticing. Knight f4 hits the queen, hits g2, hits d3. Yeah, kind of an unpleasant move. I think maybe we can start with queen e4. This is another idea we can play for. And then after g6, just h5 and going for the kingside attack. Then if black wants to take on c3, they can do that on their own tempo. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, host, but you might be right. Maybe queen d2 there. Oh, <laughs> what? Uh, you guys distracted me. Because I was expecting g6, h5. <laughs> I mean, it's still good. It's, I mean, he's busted. Because <laughs> we take the knight. Look, guys, I just wanted to continue the, the instructional experience, okay? <sighs> Let's trade queens and go for the end game. It was such a nice position, you know, the last game ended after, in one move, you know, when they blundered a piece in a very instructional moment. And now this game, you know, also ended abruptly, or should have, and I, you know, I'm just tired of it. Yeah, guys, when you have main and one, just always go for the end game, right? Because you know you can win the end game, but you're not sure you'll be able to spot the main and one in time. Okay, so black wants to keep queens because they're they're down a piece. So we're gonna just try to open things up, create some chances on the king side. Now you might ask, what good is threatening mate if you're not going to play it when given the chance? And that's that's fair, guys. That's a fair question that you can ask. And I don't know if I have a good answer for you. Oh, now he wants to trade queens. Well, now that might be too late, buddy. I think we have this move. Let's be careful here. Check. If the king moves somewhere, you know, we got it. There's queen c1. Yeah, I don't really like it. I don't really like allowing this. Even if we can kind of calculate it out, it just doesn't smell right. So let's just take here. Oh, they disconnected. We could also take with the pawn. That's totally winning too. We're up a piece. So at this point, everything is kind of good. Probably just bad connection. Okay, GG. All these players always disconnect when they're down a piece. It's so funny. Crazy. Playing all 1d4. Queen's Gambit. Let's bring the knight out. Okay, c6. Yeah, we saw this one earlier as well. Let's play knight f3. Wow, the guy's playing really, really fast. Um, knight d7. Well, that lets us play e4 if we want to, let, so let's do it. <laughs> it's totally pre-moving, right? <laughs> knight b6, huh? Okay, very strange move. Really weird move. Um, 
I guess he wants to take on c4. So yeah, let's just advance this one and take some space. <laughs> well, knight takes d5 is dumb because, you know, if he stops pre-moving, then you just like lose, right? Or like, what if he makes an illegal move and then he, his pre-move won't go in? But this is, yeah, all right, we'll take this one. <laughs> oh man, what is bro doing? How is queen c7 a logical move? How is queen c7 a logical move? All right, GG. GG. <laughs> Let's go. I don't know if that one's going to hit YouTube, to be honest with you guys. That one might not make the cut. We have a very strict instructive only policy on our YouTube channel. All right, e5. Let's take this one. We talked about this gambit yesterday, and we all kind of unanimously agreed that it was a meme opening. And uh, I would agree with that. Looks like black is playing for the trap. Amazing. We're going to get it. Going to get it in the flesh. Nice. All right. Now, very important. We play knight c3. Not this one. This one would be bad. Bring the knight out. And now we just have a good position. Rook b1. Wow. Is he really going to go for the queen sack? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love it. All right, here we go. You know, I just I just like the habit of, of saying GG. <laughs> they watched the dojo talk yesterday and they're very upset. Yeah, I think saying GG is good sportsmanship. Now, knight takes e5. This one is not right, actually. If I remember correctly, Amon always takes with the bishop to keep things more flexible. Here, I think the bishop can get, like, uh, chased very quickly here, like rook b3. And, uh, yeah, we even have, like, this idea if black is not careful. Yeah, you gotta know bishop takes e5. Yeah. Okay, now rook e3, I think, is just winning. Uh, rook b5 might also be good, but then black has bishop c3. And I don't know, <laughs> some funny lines like this. But this one, I think, is just clean, clean winning. They defend the knight, and we just go f4. And we can weaken all of our stuff because... Actually, wait, f4, bishop b6, you know, it's not that... It's not that obvious. Okay. Fair enough. So let's go. Let's just develop with uh, E3 here. Just covering this one and getting our pieces out. I mean, it's a fun opening. I can understand why people like it. It is a fun line. In bullet, yeah, I would say it is playable for sure. <laughs> yeah, I remember Ramon actually played it in a real game. <laughs> okay, let's castle. Okay, now that we're castled, we have a lot more options. Now we can go like rook b5. And so that's a real threat because bishop c3, knight b1. You can also think about going like knight c4. And this is just a matter of taking it slow. No, rook b4 is equal. <laughs> okay, c5. That doesn't feel right. That move feels like it's kind of weakening. Let's bring this one here. I didn't I just didn't really understand the question. 
to be honest. I'm sorry. I just didn't really get it. We're gonna pre-move this one. I mean, we didn't, but we would in a bullet game. I don't like doing pre-moves on stream because I feel like it makes things confusing, but that's what I would do in a regular game. Rook b5, I wasn't sure anymore because like, I think black just goes b6. Yeah, and then the rook feels kind of silly. Okay, but now the rook isn't really doing a whole lot here. So I think we want to use this trick to take some space because now we get the rook active. Bishop on a5 is going to be kind of stuck. If knight takes c4, there is bishop d5 there. And then on bishop b7, we can either go e5 or f3. Kind of like e5. Just taking taking a little bit more space. And then on knight e4, we can go either bishop d5 or even just take on d7. It's probably, probably fine too. Although I do have to be careful about knight d2 here. So maybe here I'll go like rook h3 and <laughs> just play for checkmate. I think actually that looks pretty fun. We could do that too. D5. No way. We take and we play for checkmate. Thanks, John. Thank you. Much appreciated. All right, let's play for mate. Let's go rook here. We could have also just gone like queen g4 and now we'll go queen c1. Oh, the chess.com picture. I didn't understand who you're talking about. <laughs> I, I just didn't understand. Yeah, that's Tarash. His name is Tarash. Dr. Siegbert Tarash. He was a really good chess player. Very good. Some even say he was great. Okay, king h8, sorry, I missed this move. We're gonna go here. And then on rook g8, we have classic maiden two. Everyone should know this one. Yeah, Dr. Siegbert Tarash. A very influential player, actually. I think he was, he's one of the most instructive players out there to study. All right, let's go d4. And we got a Slav, all right. Develop knight f3. Black has played e6 here. Let's play e3. Actually, I'll stick to the normal knight c3, develop this way. Okay, bishop e7, and we'll play e4. So many players, they, they don't stop this pawn break, and I think it's kind of an error. It's okay, knight f6, we'll play bishop d3. I mean, white just gets a little bit more space here, and I think we get a comfortable position. In the games we've seen so far, like I keep mentioning, Black is not really able to solve the problem of the light squared bishop. Hey, Mitch. Thanks for the bits. Much appreciated. Thank you, guys. You guys are being very giving today. <laughs> I really appreciate it. Knight of six, bishop c2. But it makes sense. We try to give you guys chess knowledge. And you repay us with your bits and your subs. Um, okay, so now the way I kind of like building the attack is I just go very brute force. I just go queen d3, I keep an eye on this one, and then I try to play bishop g5 and I take on f6. Okay, so g6, so black wants no part of that, that's fine. But let's bring the bishop out to h6 now. Rook will come to e8, and then I think we want to bring this knight to e5 at some point, but let's just first get the rooks in. 
Seventeen. Thank you so much for the bits. I right, spread rookie one. Yeah, black is playing really quick. I wonder, trying to do the same thing. It's funny. Okay, well let's play knight to e5. Uh, now on c5 we have kind of a funny idea. We can take queen takes, and go queen takes d8, and win on the back rank. Is Chess Dojo Twitch partner yet? No, actually we we applied once, but we were denied. But I'm sure we will apply again soon in the future because things have been going well. Johnny Elias, thanks for subscribing with the Prime Sub. Yeah, if you guys haven't used your Prime Sub yet this month, consider using it on Dojo. It doesn't, um, doesn't cost you anything. Okay, I want to be very careful here about now not allowing <laughs> Queen takes H2. We could play C5. And uh, we also have other moves here, like Queen F3, kind of annoying. Yeah, Queen F3 is looking like a real winner, I gotta say. Just hitting this one, hitting this one, and then setting up maybe some sacrifices as well. If Queen E7, we'll go Bishop G5 most likely. And then King G7, Knight G4, and we're just gonna work on the pin. So Bishop D8 might be might be the best move here. But then of course we're not worried and we'll we'll come up with something to do. Maybe bishop g5 again. But there's a lot more to life than that, and I realized that uh, in these last two years. And um Bishop F4. And so we head back We'll find something. I mean at this point our pieces are just so well developed. Black's bishop is still stuck on c8. Like I've been saying, it's like you gotta solve the problem of this bishop. They did. Well, you know, Twitch, they just look at the numbers. So we just we weren't getting enough viewers. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. But I think we'll get there as long as we keep we keep trucking along. Okay, queen e7, let's go bishop g5, just working on the pin. And then king g7, knight g4. They can defend the knight enough times with bishop d8, but the problem is the pieces are in the wrong order. So we're gonna go knight g4 here, and then when we take, take, black is losing the queen. Okay, we got a modern defense, g6, so let's stick to like a classic queen's gambit setup. We'll play knight c3 here. C6. All right, well, if they're not going to fight for the center, we'll take the center. Queen B6. Cheeky. Cheeky. Attacking this pawn. Well, I'm just going to develop it. I'm not going to overthink things here. <laughs> yeah, David, that game was crazy, actually. that I, I did not deserve to draw that game. We're just gonna keep uh, developing here. Now maybe black wants to play bishop g4, which is honestly kind of an annoying move because then they will be uh, threatening to take this one. Uh, so let's just play h3 and nip this idea in the bud. Yeah, Sventeen did a three-part series on that <laughs> on that saga. <laughs> okay, Bishop E2. Now we're just gonna keep developing. My guess is that Knight H6 is connected with like playing F5 at some point. That's usually why I would see players playing this one. But you know, I don't think yeah, I don't feel like Black is really playing this one well. They're just kind of putting their pieces like all over the place, whereas white is just fighting for the center. And at some point, this is going to come home, come home to roost. Okay, knight of six. So this is kind of inviting us to play e5. But I don't know if we really want to play e5 just yet. Let's 
Yeah, I think I'll just play simple move queen c2. Just cover this one and prepare bishop e3. Of course, we could like sack the pawn as well, but I just think there is no need here. When we have like a simple developing move. Rook b1, I don't like playing this move because I don't think the rook is actually like good on this square. It just defends the pawn. But queen c2, I think the queen is actually well placed here. So it doesn't feel like a loss of a tempo. Though now I really want to go queen d2 because this one is just hanging. On the other hand, if black castles and then we play queen d2, then black loses the piece. So queen d2 gives black a chance to save the piece. We also have e5 if we want. Yeah, a lot of good options at this point because we're just really way ahead in development. Well, let's just play a neutral move. Let's go rook fe1. And I'm just going to hope for castles here so I can play queen d2 and pick up the piece. It's not hope chess. <laughs> I'm preventing him from castling. Whereas if I play queen d2, I would be forcing him to make a good move. Now black is really struggling with their development, so I'm just super, super tempted to push with e5. e5 takes, takes, knight h5, we can win the piece with g4. Maybe we can do something else there. Hmm. Wow, so many good options. Yeah, let's just take the piece. So 97, so on this one, I was just gonna go with the typical Pawn sack here, e6. Also consider bishop f4. Yeah, actually, like, I kind of regret playing e5, because now when I go e6, it, like, lets the knight out. But I think it's still, I think it's still worth it. Let's go knight g5. Now knight e5 will have a couple of options. Okay, knight f6. Yeah, this one's less worried about because now, again, black has a hard time developing, so we get a little bit more time for our initiative. I think we just go rook a d1. I think this move is pretty, pretty clearly useful in all lines. Okay, now I think, I think we found the plan that we need. If black goes queenside, we have either knight b6 or bishop b6, otherwise 
Knight comes to c5. All right, b6. Yeah, we can take that, but what do we want to take it with? I don't know. I'm going to take with bishop so I can put my knight on c5 at some point. So queen b7 will just pull the bishop back. Okay, queen c8. Let's bring this guy in. Now we have kind of just simple threat. Knight takes d7, knight takes d7, knight takes c6, and that should be game. It was important to see that rook b8, our bishop is not in trouble. Although even knight d7 there is probably totally fine. But this one I like, just grabbing more material and getting ready to put the bishop back. Okay, now we have more threats of takes, takes, and taking on g7. All right, let's take this one. Yeah, now time to just clean up. So, just opening up my rook, come to e7, opening up my bishop as well. Okay, knight f5, good move, I think we'll <laughs> just pin this one. Um, have I ever played Raven Sturt? I know Raven, I met him uh, last year at a tournament, we hung out, uh, but no, we never, we never played any official games. This is the Twitch and Chill playlist off of Spotify. We'll choose whether or not to trade queens once black makes their move. They go back to the back rank, then we'll trade and we'll go rook d7. If they went here, then we probably would have kept. Okay, rook f7. Okay, I think we're just gonna play for just a very simple conversion here we got tons of time and we just want to keep things simple just clean up use your extra piece easy peasy yeah for sure mario people definitely play way too fast at most levels all right let's take this one and then um, just advance. I guess we could play this. Oh man, I always, <laughs> I always struggle. Do we play F3? <laughs> or no, I mean, we don't need to. We don't need to. Let's not do it. Skip check. Move the rook over. And then we'll just promote the pawn. So next is check and then King C8, we have a nice mate. This is a good mating pattern to know. Let's put the bishop here. And if here, we'll go here. <laughs> Just drop him in. 
All right, that's gonna do it, GG.